position do you play? Same as same, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. Whatever they need me at, for real. Um, have you been playing any like deep safety? We, we know you've played like over the slot, and we've seen outside a little bit. You playing any deep safety at all? No, no deep safety. Where are you most comfortable, Sean? Um, yeah. Corner and nickel's the same thing. Just yeah. at nickel, they got a two-way go. So um, I feel like corner is easier. But I'm um, comfortable at both spots. I feel like. I was like Coach Hepner said, you know, you, you might be playing over the slot guy one minute, and you might be out, out mm -hmm. wide the next. Is that kind of the way practice is gone? And, um, and how yeah. much do you like that? You know? Yeah, me and Rico have been rotating um, uh, with the ones at the corner and the uh, nickel spot. So it's not a problem. You just got to learn both positions. Um, that's the only thing. At nickel, you probably will get more blitzes, but yeah. that'll be the only thing. You know, in the spring, you seemed pretty excited about what was going on mm -hmm. in the defensive backs room and here we are like six months later five months later well, what's your sense of where you guys have made progress or whatever you want to call it compared to a year ago like like i said um we're playing a lot faster um really we're playing really a lot faster we got a lot of a lot of a lot of linebackers that's moving like baron baron is very fast like four or five yeah. at, at this age so that's that's irregular but we're just playing a lot faster i feel like that's that's been our goal do y'all you feel like y'all have i mean we keep I keep asking, who are, the, who are the two starting safeties? You know, mm -hmm. where's Brendan White fit? You know, he's the bullet. Mm -hmm. so maybe he'll be. I mean, how many packages? I guess do you feel like y'all have without giving away probably secrets? I mean, uh, it's a couple packages. Um, you got packages where the Brendan White's in. You got a package where Baron come in. It's a different package. It matter who we playing that week because Michigan State they run a lot of. They have probably had two tight ends on um, yeah. Michigan. I heard they run the spread this year, so we're probably gonna have more corners that game. You know what I'm saying? It matter who we play that week. So. But, but how many packages do you figure you're going to figure into you and yourself? Uh, really can't tell you. Um, it's really whatever they need me. Because yeah. if we're playing in the state, I'd rather have the backers and the tackle instead of me on the tackle team. It just makes sense. I want to think, what is, what's the best thing Coach Halfley has brought to y'all's group from your vantage point? Mm, learning the game more. I feel like he taught us the game um, from just different aspects of route concepts of the different splits of a receiver. So if they're like tight, they're probably gonna span and throw deep routes. If they're wide, they're gonna do some, some type of slant. If if one bubbles, uh, if, if two bubbles, one's gonna definitely do a slant sign coming inside. So just learning different route concepts, really. Jeffrey Okuda mentioned that Josh Proctor has forced the most turnovers this camp. Mm -hmm. It seems like he's having a real breakout camp. Did you see anything from him in the off season that um, may have led to that? His focus, um, you know, your freshman year, you come in here, you don't know what's about to happen. You don't know. How the coaches are for real. They tell you this, but when you get here, it's always a different thing. Um, just Coach Halfley telling him he has the ability to play, and he took that and took that to the field. And the thing Coach Halfley mentioned with him was consistency. Yeah. What, what have you done in your game to build that consistency the more you've been at Ohio State? Um, so for me in the offseason, my, my job was I learned a lot of route concepts, learning the defense, so just helping other people with the defense. Um, one of my problems is finishing at the top of the route, so I know I need to get better at that. But I know I'm going to get better at that, that's why I've been working. How does it show up that Coach Apple has been in the NFL? How does it, in meetings or when you speak with him, um, what, what's a tip-off that he has studied it at the highest level, so to speak? He knows a lot of things. From this count, you, you can see that he knows a lot, a lot of football from – just going against the offense, he'll tell us something. Then on the field, he'll give us something real quick, and he'll fix the whole defense. So he knows a lot of football. Um, we'll be in the meetings. He'll be like, yeah, back in the day in 2016, I got hurt on this play with this person and that person. Like, how you know all that? And it's just he knows so much football, and he really loves the game. You can, tell, you can just tell he loves the game. Sean, why did you say that Nick was more difficult than corner, and why do you think you're trusted in that tough spot? Um, Nichols definitely because the slot, first of all, he's off the ball and he has a two way go. Most of the slots be faster than fast. Um, but uh, they trust me at nickel because they know I know the defense, um, know the ends out of it. Um, that, that's really the main reason. Damon knows it too. He's more quicker, quicker lateral than me, so that's why he has to learn how to play nickel because that's, that's what he probably is going to be in the league or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So that, that's why he has to learn it. But Damon, he's grasping it really, really well for real. Plus, a lot of teams offensively now, they're looking for a matchup in the slot. Yeah. I mean, that, and that, that's, you know that's another thing. Action, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like, me and Damon are two different types of people. Like, he's shorter than me, but more quicker than me. I'm a taller dude, taller, longer dude. So, like, it matters who's in that slot that week, too. So, that's going to be a big deal. Is there a reason you think? Go ahead. 
Is there a reason you think you guys have forced as many turnovers as you did in fall camp? Mm, set it up one more time. Why do you think you guys were able to force so many turnovers in camp? Um, playing faster. Um, I think that's that's really the main reason. Playing faster and getting on course with our safeties. Prop been doing very very well getting on course, like reading the quarterback at the top of his route, like top of his drop. I mean, and getting to the ball. That's that's why Prop been making a lot of plays. And what I learned, picks come to you. you can't go to picks. They got to come to you. So you just got to be patient. And it's been coming across. Do you think you can carry over the games? Oh, definitely. We, with our with our D line, it's definitely gonna carry over to the games. I know that for a fact. You know, they added the bullet position in order to help you guys. Well, not help, but to make an impact in the defensive back. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing a difference having a bullet position? And if so, what is the impact of that on the DBs? The bullet position really is just putting a DB, which is Brandon White, Jocelyn Wynn, that's big, that likes to tackle. That could guard tight ends, and that's and they're athletic. That that's really what the bullet position is, to be honest, to be real. Um, that's that's really all I could tell you. Does it help from it, that turnover standpoint? It, it helps. Um, Pete is Pete can play too, so it's like it, it really don't matter. It just like, like I said, turnovers come to you. You got to be patient. Like offense gonna make drives on you. You just have to be patient until they mess up. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's that's how I feel that they've been working. Weird seeing a guy with Pete Warner or Brendan White's build doing defensive back things. Um, not I really. can't see. I can't see. It's, it's really. almost like watching a point guard dunk to me. Not really, because no? B White, B White is a big. When he first got here, he was 225 playing receiver. Like he just a different creature. Like. It's not a lot of people. It's not a lot of Brendan Whites. It's not a lot of Baron Brownies. Like Brand, I feel like Baron, if he wanted to, he could go play the edge right now, and and be dominant at it. It's just, it's it's just not a lot of them. So, is there anybody else who's like you and is bouncing between positions in the defensive backfield? Um, Damon, Damon, um, Amir Reed, he he could play corner and play nickel, um, but it's probably out of us three, Marcus Williams. You know, but that, those would be the only ones. So. Who, who behind you, Damon and Jeff? sort of stood out to you at this point? Um, really all that freshman class from last year, so Cam, Seven, they they look re very, very well. Um, they, they could, like, if they left here, they could play anywhere. I promise you that. Tyreek been hurt, but it's okay. He'll be back. And that's, that's really the only thing. What about Seven? Like, what, 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 what makes you say that about him? Seven is a 6'2", very, very strong and athletic. Like, can do every dunk in the book, like, that you th can think of. And, it's not a lot of six two, very very strong looking like him, and he's only a, he's only eighteen, so it's like yeah. he's he got so much time to grow, and when he learns the game, he's gonna be dumb. He's gonna be a dominant player. Him and Cam is just he's very very fast. Like, how's know, I'm sorry, how's how's Tyreek hanging in? I know we haven't seen him out there on the field at all yet. Just uh, is he gonna get back soon, and how's he hanging oh, yeah, in? He's, I guess he, mentally, he's he's good. Um, he's gonna be back soon. Just. It, you gotta take it day by day, like like I told him. I told my brother got injured. Like I told him, you gotta take it day by day. It's mm -hmm. life. Like you can't do nothing about it. It happens. It happens. You live. You living. So that's all that matters. So when you're coming out of high school, how important was playing the press man, seeing the guys who came before you get into the NFL and then playing in that system? Um, it was important. That was what I grew up with at Trinity. But from what from watch what Coach Halfley did in NFL, you gotta mix it up. It's, you have to. Like you have no choice. You play and press the whole game. They gonna know what you're gonna do in your press technique all the time. So you have to mix it up. You wouldn't have said that though last year, right? Now would you? Mm -hmm. Probably would. How, how, how do you convince you? How did how do you get you to buy him? He he been in the league for seven to eight years. So <laughs> you ain't got no choice but to trust him. Like, he coached some of the best. Richard Sherman. He got he took he coached he scored seven brother at, at on San Francisco. It's like he knows so many people. It's like you have to trust him. And how he came in here like. Teaching us different things like that we didn't know, and I've been in college for two years already. And this might be my third year. Yeah, I'm still learning. What, what are those things that you didn't know? What did it, um, what, do you sh what do you show you initially that, that made you buy in? Like the route, the, was, different route concepts. Like he'll be in practice, be like, all right, this about to happen, might happen. Boom, it happened. Be again, all right. Since they did that, they about to come to this place in about three more plays. Three more plays. Boom, it happened. You like, hey, how you know all this? It just he know concepts, different concepts of this routes and receivers tendencies and learning splits is I didn't really know that and I, that's that's what I'm trying to work on my game is studying that during through film. Sean which of these receivers in practice has made you the most better? Mm, really all. All of them are tough because all of them got different tendencies. Um 
Garrett is going to be a good, 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 good guy. Olave is going to put a lot of pressure on people. You know, KJ, Ben, they're going to do their thing all the time. But if I had to say who who had a good, I'd probably say Olave. He he done some good things. On camp, so. You went against that. You went against that unit last year. Um, that you lost a lot of mm -hmm. quality players. When you go against them this year, what do you think? Oh, it's the same. It ain't no drop for real. Um, you got um, Paris Campbell, Alave. <laughs> you got Ben Vick. He's still. You know back. Paris Campbell. Yeah, I know. But Alave, Alave is very good. Okay. Um, you got Garrett. Some of the freshmen that just came in, they're going to be very, very good. They just got to get the scheme and stuff, but. All the receivers, there's really no drop off to me in my opinion. Jeff uh, Peter was raving about Josh Proctor. Oh, yeah. What, he's had like, you know, a ton of, of interceptions or whatever. Uh, what would you want to say about his game? Proctor's a, he a creature. He different. Just put it like that. He's, he's very. A creature. What does that mean? He's very different. It's not a lot of drop. Josh Proctor's in this world. I'll tell you. As a player, as a person. As a player. Mean, as a player. Yeah. As, he just, he make a lot of plays like, as safety. Like, he's. 6'3", with, with Jalen Ramsey arms, looking like Jalen Ramsey at running, hitting everything. Like he, he he's gonna be very, very, very. Malik Hooker was before your time here, yeah. right? But that's yeah. That he's like Malik Hooker, but bigger and taller. Okay. And he's younger at his age. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.